Episode 8 Scott and the Herring Gull The London and North Eastern Railway was one of the so-called Big Four companies, formed during the 1923 Grouping Act in Britain. In this form, with engines from the North Eastern region and Great Northern Railways, it lasted a mere 25 years, but left an everlasting impression of luxury, prestige and speed. Forty years after the end of British mainline steam, these are the stories they tell. After Christmas and the New Year, the yard was busier than ever, and all the engines found they had more than enough work to do. Alan was taking the Fair Maid Express regularly, and would often pass Sir Ralph on the viaduct, taking the Midday Express. The two engines would whistle to each other, and disappear from view in identical clouds of steam. Stephen and Herbert shared the stopping trains between them, hurrying along the branch lines in opposite directions and occasionally stopping at the same station together and exchanging news. At the yard, Nigel and George spent all their time organising trucks and vans, bustling back and forth about the yard. They seemed to spend all of their free time talking about cricket, which drove Alan the A1 Pacific absolutely mad. Enough! He said to them one day, Can't you think of something else to talk about? Why? George asked. We like cricket. Right, but I've been hearing about cricket for the last three hours, Alan retorted. Why don't you talk about a man's game? Cricket is a man's game, Nigel retorted. You don't see giant squids playing cricket. I meant, Alan said impatiently, Why don't you talk about footy? Footy? Hi, footy, soccer, a man's sport, Alan said proudly. My driver and I love footy. I think he means football, George whispered. Oh, football, Nigel said. Well, well, I, I like listening to sports report on driver's old radio. Now you're talking, Alan said, beaming, and they all chatted together until the foreman told them to get back to work. The three engines set about their task. Nigel, being the yard shunter, went to fetch some trucks for a goods train, and George helped Alan arrange his coaches. When they had finished, Alan whistled goodbye to George and set off for the junction. He stopped under the signal gantry. There were many signals on the gantry, the red signals being home signals, and the distant signals were the yellow signals. In the distance, an express was snorting up the embankment towards the junction, and as it approached, Alan whistled to say hello. The engine burst into view from under a bridge and whistled its reply, thundering past and onto the junction and into the sunset. 